Yeah. And uh, I knew at that point that in my own English words, I had just said the Shahada yeah. or the Islamic testimonial of faith. Uh -huh. And Sister Iman very nicely smiled and said, that's okay, it takes some people a little longer than others, <laughs> and, and left me yeah. to, to stew on it a little more. Uh -huh. Now again, I knew I had just said the Shahada, but I was still an atypical Christian, mind you. Uh -huh. You know, now I'm an atypical Christian who's reading the Quran in English translation, saying the five daily prayers of Islam in English and yeah. private, is willing to say the Shahada in my own carefully parsed English words, mm -hmm. but I'm still an atypical Christian. I'm not a Muslim. Yeah. If somebody else, some Muslim, wants to take what I've said and say, you're a Muslim, that's their label of religious identity. Just real it's quick, not mine. Define what a Muslim is really quickly, just and then continue on, please. Well, a Muslim is one, by definition, by definition, uh, linguistically, one who submits, and that's one who submits to God. Uh, but typically, one says a person becomes a Muslim when they say the Shahada or the testimonial of faith. And that just made easy, summed up with one word in Arabic, right? Mm -hmm. That's yeah, simple. Okay, so. I'm still an atypical Christian. Yeah. And I think I'm starting to sort my way out of this challenge to my sense of religious identity. If someone asks me whether I'm a Muslim, I'll go through a long five minute song and dance in which I'll say, I don't believe in the divinity of Jesus Christ. I don't believe in the Trinity. I do believe there is one and only one God. I do believe that Muhammad, peace be upon him, was one of the prophets of God. Uh, and yes, I'm saying the five prayers every day in English at their appointed times. And yes, I'm reading English translation of the meaning of the Quran every day. Uh, but I'm an atypical Christian. Mm -hmm. And so that's sort of where things were for a while. How do you get past this now? Well, <laughs> around the start of March of that year, Ramadan started. Yeah. And this, of course, is the month in which Muslims fast from dawn to sunset. Well, I have all these Muslim friends and I spend so much time with these Muslim friends and it would be very rude of me to eat or drink in front of them while they're fasting, so I, I won't do that. But if I'm gonna spend that much time fasting anyway, well, you know, why don't I just go ahead and fast from dawn to sunset like they're doing? Yeah. And I, I sort of rationalized and half convinced myself I was just doing this out of common courtesy for my friends. But again, I found it very meaningful yeah. as I began to do it. So now I'm an atypical Christian who <laughs> is willing to say the Shahada in English, reading the Quran in English, saying the five prayers in English, fasting during Ramadan, but I'm still an atypical Christian. You're, you're, you're kind of driving the car, the Porsche, but you're not calling it a Porsche. That's about where we're at. <laughs> and again, I thought I had it all worked out. Yeah. Uh, other people could call me a Muslim if they wanted to, but that wasn't my you weren't ready. label yeah. of religious identity. I was an atypical Christian. And I thought I had it all worked out. I, I thought I had it planned out perfectly. You know, I could believe as my Muslim friends believed. I could practice as my Muslim friends practiced. But I could keep my sense of religious identity of being a Christian. Well, that lasted for quite a while. But it was late in March of 1993, and my wife and I were now in Jordan doing that Middle Eastern trip, and we were staying with the extended family uh -huh. of one of our friends in Denver. Uh, and one day, Uncle Awad uh -huh. motioned for me to come with him. Uncle who? Uncle Awad. Awad. That was his name, Awad. Mm -hmm. And uh, he spoke not a word of English, yeah. elderly Palestinian Muslim brother. So I got in the car with him. And we drove off, and he took me to a Palestinian refugee camp. And we got out, and we started walking down the narrow lane of the camp. And as we were walking down that lane, another elderly person came walking towards us, who also, it turns out, spoke not one word of English. Mm -hmm. And we met there, and we exchanged assalamu alaikum, or peace be upon you, and shook hands. And then he turned to me, and he asked me a question in Arabic. In Arabic now? In Arabic, because he spoke no English. Yeah. Now, my Arabic was limited to a few simple words and phrases. Yes. And that was about it. Uh -huh. I certainly couldn't hold even an elementary conversation uh -huh. in Arabic. But I knew just enough Arabic that I fully understood his question. Yes. And his question was, are you a Muslim? 
Oh. <laughs> and, you know, my five-minute verbal jam gymnastics. Out the window now. Out the window. You stumped. Utterly useless. You know, I knew just enough Arabic that I could answer nam for yes or la for no, and those were the only two choices I had. You got set up. <laughs> I was set up. Set up by uh, someone far, far the creator of better, the and yes, Arabic. far better platter than I. Yes. And uh, alhamdulillah, or praise be to God, at that point in time, I said nam or yes. Mm -hmm. But it took all of that before I was willing to give up that sense of religious identity that I had. And I think this is something that people who are involved in sharing the message of Islam often fail to appreciate. Sometimes it's much easier to get a person to change their religious beliefs than it is to get them to change their sense of identity, mm. of who they are. That can be very difficult. When you well, I believe in, in one God. There is one and only one God. Uh -huh. And that one God... Because is, some Christians will say we also believe in just one God. Well, and in point of fact, to be fair, yeah. they do. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you properly understand the notion of the Trinity, it is monotheistic. Yeah. However, from a Muslim perspective, yeah. they are adding partners. Partners. Uh, and so they have their Trinitarian formula, three persons and one substance. Yeah. And, and for us, as Muslims, it's the unity of God. Yeah. There's no three persons in one substance. There is only God. Mm -hmm. There are basically five pillars of, of practice. Yeah. Uh, the first one is saying uh, the testimonial of faith. Uh, which, means, which basically means I testify that there is no God but God. Yeah. And I testify that Muhammad, uh, peace be upon him, was one of the messengers of God. Now, does this exclude like Jesus, no, Moses, no, no. and all of them? Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. In fact, the Quran tells us we have to accept those prophets as so, well. So is your relationship now with Jesus, do you feel like stronger? Do you feel like you've lost a connection with him? No, I don't feel like there's any loss of connection at all. No? No, of course not. What do you believe about Jesus now? Uh, basically what I believed about him during my years as an atypical Christian, which uh -huh. was that he was uh, inspired by God, he received a revelation from God, but he was not God. Yeah. So he was like the other messengers? Sure. Doing what? Sharing the, the revelation that God gave to him. That's it. A teacher teaching yes. us. Yes. So can, is it safe to say that he was, during his time, the way, the truth, and the life? Just oh, like absolutely. Abraham, absolutely. Moses? In, in terms of the message he preached. In fact, the word prophet yeah. comes from the Greek, and it's a translation of the Hebrew word uh, nevi'im, which in turn comes from the Akkadian language. And if you go back to that Akkadian language and look at what, what it means, it means one who speaks for. Yeah. And in a religious context, one who means, speaks for. Yeah, it uh -huh. means one who speaks for God. This is what a prophet is. Yeah. One who speaks for God. By okay. definition, what advice do you have for this person? Well, I, I, the advice I would give if, if you're wrestling with this issue of religious identity is don't compound the, uh, the conflict. Becoming a Muslim does not mean that you give up your national or your cultural identity. I'm an American. I was born in America. I was raised in America. My national cultural identity hasn't changed at all. I'm still an American. And to become a Muslim, you don't need to give up your national identity or your cultural identity. The only identity under consideration is your religious identity. And so if you've studied the Bible, uh, and the Bible is one of the paths to Islam, I would maintain. Mm -hmm. If you've studied the Bible, if you've done your research through the commentaries, if you've come to the conclusion that there is one and only one God, uh, and that that God is unity, not trinity, uh, if you've come to the conclusion that Jesus was inspired by God, uh, and God gave revelation to Jesus, but he was still a human being, then... Please, take a look at Islam, because we're really talking the same language here. And again, you don't have to give up your national cultural identity to be a Muslim. Thank you. This is some great advice, and thank you very much for being with us. God willing, we're going to have a 
special section because we're going to look forward to God willing doing some more topics with you, picking your Good. brain so we can learn some more from this in-depth uh, knowledge you have of the Bible and some of your experiences so more of us, including myself, can benefit. Thank you. My pleasure. And I'd like to thank you for being with us again on the Dean Show. I hope you got the benefit from Dr. Uh, Dirk's story and his way to Islam. And I hope that you continue to come back, visit us here at the Dean Show. And we hope that, inshallah, God willing, that God Almighty guides us all to the one truth, that he guides our hearts, our minds, our bodies to accept that he is the only one to be worshipped. He is the only one that we should turn to, that we should revere, that we should love. The one God, the God who Jesus prayed to, who Moses prayed to, who Abraham in the last and final messenger sent to mankind, the Prophet Muhammad, who he prayed to. These were the best teachers, people who we should emulate because they were showing us how to praise God, to worship God and be close to God and get to paradise because life is short. This life is very short, it's transitory, it's passing quickly. And they all taught that there's a better life, there's a paradise waiting, and that's what we're trying to get to. And we need God, and we need God's help to get to that paradise. We'll see you next time. Thank you once again. Until then, assalamu alaikum, peace be unto you. <laughs> إن في خلق السماوات والأرض واختلاف الليل والنهار لآيات لآيات لأولي الألباب الذين يذكرون الله قياما وقعودا وعلى جنوبهم ويتفكرون في خلق السماوات والأرض ربنا ما خلقت هذا باطلا سبحانك فقنا عذاب النار أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن في خلق السماوات والأرض واختلاف الليل والنهار لآيات لآيات لأولي الألباب الذين يذكرون الله قياما وقعودا وعلى جنوبهم ويتفكرون في خلق السماوات والأرض ربنا ما خلقت هذا باطلا سبحانك فقنا عذاب النار